This call is now being recorded. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, yes, okay. The previous lecture uh, we were discussing on. Uh, drum brake system drum brake system also we have uh, seen various kinds of uh, braking systems their classifications main components etc some advantages disadvantages now uh, we may move to the next topic that is disc brakes how the disc brakes are operating or the working principle behind disc brake and what are all the uh, components, main components, etc. Okay. Okay, disc brakes. Okay, by the name itself, we can see uh, the braking system. It is a braking system by using certain kind of discs. So, how it is working, or what are the principal factors or principal components? You can see here in this disking, disc braking system, the friction plays a main role in controlling the vehicle speed. So, in any braking system, the main thing is friction or uh, the main controlling factor is the friction. So, friction, by utilizing the friction, the uh, vehicle speed is uh, controlled or uh, the vehicle is made to stop. The frictional effect developed is applied over the rotating disc made up of a metal by means of frictional pads. So, here, uh, in the earlier case, that is for the drum brakes and all, we are utilizing uh, a friction or a braking shoe. A braking shoe is engaged to the uh, drum, brake drum, which is connected to the wheel. So, uh, the engagement of both uh, drum and the uh, shoe, brake shoe makes the or controls the vehicle speed. But in this case, we are using or we are utilizing a rotating disc, rotating disc which is made up of a metal and the frictional effect is developed or the friction is created by, uh, by means of or uh, engaging this uh, particular disc uh, with the frictional pads certain kind of frictional pads will be available and these pads will come into contact with this uh, rotating disc which may uh, makes them stationary and thereby uh, controlling the vehicle speed higher the applied forces or higher applied forces can be used in disc brakes than in drum brakes because the design of the rotor is stronger than the design of the drum so here you can achieve high forces or high applied forces. So uh, that's the reason uh, in most uh, recent vehicles we can see much uh, importance in disc brakes. We are using uh, disc brakes. So here we can have high applied forces than in the case of the uh, drum brakes. This is a figure you can see. 
here you can see the rotor and both brake pads here is a piston and this is the caliper so detailed uh, and the details will be given later so this is the basic diagram here the wheel wheel is having uh, or uh, this rotor is placed in the wheel and this is the stationary part stationary part you can see this this is the caliper and caliper is containing the brake pads and by certain mechanism by uh, that is uh, hydraulic mechanism and all this particular brake pads will be came into closer to the uh, rotor and which may creates a friction over the surface or the disc and that uh, is used for controlling the vehicle speed so before going further uh, you can see the basic animations regarding these disc brakes The brake system works based on Pascal's law. The law states that pressure exerted anywhere in a contained incompressible fluid is distributed equally in all directions throughout the fluid. Let's make it simple. Consider two cylinders with pistons, connected each other, and filled with incompressible fluid. The mathematical relation is as follows. F1, applied force on left piston. F2, receive force at right piston. A1 and A2 are surface areas of both pistons. P1 and P2 are pressure experienced by both pistons. Pressure can be stated as force experienced per area. So P1 equals F1 by A1. And P2 equals F2 by A2. According to Pascal's law, pressure on both pistons are equal, which gives us P1 equals P2. So, when force is applied to the left piston, the fluid will transmit the force to the right piston surface. But, it will be a factor of the ratio of two piston surfaces. This concludes that, with a small force F1 at left piston, will give a higher force F2 at right piston, provided if A2 is greater than A1. With this, the left piston can act at the pedal side, and the right piston can act at the wheel side, transferring energy from pedal to the brakes. Now we know the theory, let's see how this works in real. Let's see the exploded view of a car wheel, and the parts involved. The wheel hub assembly, the disc brake rotor, the brake caliper assembly, the wheel, and the lug nuts. The wheel hub assembly, holds the wheel and the disc rotor, and the bearing inside it allows their smooth rotation. The disc rotor, is the part to which the brake pads squeeze against. This will create friction that retards the rotation of the wheel. The disc rotor, produces a lot of heat due to this friction. And the drilled holes provides ventilation, to remove this heat. The brake caliper assembly, uses the hydraulic force from the brake pedal, to squeeze the brake pads to the rotor surfaces thus creating friction, and decelerates the wheel. The caliper assembly consists of, the caliper bracket, slider pins, dust boots, inner brake pad, outer brake pad, caliper frame, and inside it, the piston. The caliper frame, is having a banjo fitting, through which the fluid will reach till the piston. 
The pressurized fluid from the pedal's side is capable of pushing the piston with great force. Also, the caliper frame is free to slide along the slider pins within the fixed extend. Now we know the parts, let's see how it works. When you apply the brake, the caliper will receive the high pressure hydraulic fluid from the brake master cylinder. The fluid will push the piston, which makes the inner brake pad to squeeze against the disc rotor surface. As a result, the fluid's backward force will push the caliper frame along the slide pin, which makes the outer brake pad to squeeze against the other side of the disc rotor. Let's see one more time from the top view. The fluid pushes the piston, and the piston pushes the inner brake pad. Once the inner brake pad is pushed against the rotor, the fluid will push the caliper frame. The outer brake pad will now be pulled towards the other side of the disc rotor. This is how the disc brake system works on wheel side. In the next part, we will see what's a master cylinder, and how it transfer fluid to the caliper. Welcome to Auto Tech Labs. Today we will see the second part of how an automotive disc brake system works. In the last part, we saw the working principle at the wheel side. In this part, we will see how it works at the pedal side. The master cylinder is the main part here. It transfers the force on the pedal to the calipers. There is a push rod, outlet port, and a fluid reservoir tank. Let's see what's inside the master cylinder. There are inlet ports for the fluid to reach the cylinder, compensating ports, primary piston, secondary piston, retaining springs, and piston seals. Now, let's see how the master cylinder works. When you press the brake, the push rod pushes the primary piston closing the first compensating port. This creates pressure in the cylinder which pushes the secondary piston, and furtherly closing the second compensating port. Hence both pistons, will push the fluid to their corresponding calipers. In case if the secondary piston fails to build up pressure, the primary piston can still develop pressure, with increased travel. And if the primary piston fails, the secondary piston will not receive any pressure to move. So the push rod at the end of the first piston, can push secondary piston, which requires much force to be applied on the brake pedal. Even for a fully functional master cylinder, pushing the pistons through the brake pedal requires much force. So later on, another component named boosters were introduced. The brake booster comes between the pedal and the master cylinder, and utilizes the vacuum from the engine, assisting the brake pedal and makes it easier to apply brakes. Let's take a look inside the servo. It consists of, a valve rod, dust boot, air filter, valve spring, diaphragm, diaphragm spring, vacuum check valve, hydraulic push rod. When you push the pedal, the valve rod opens the inlet valve, allowing air into the diaphragm front chamber through the filter. This air, along with the vacuum created by the engine in the diaphragm rear chamber, pulls the diaphragm, and furtherly pushing the push rod towards the master cylinder. Thus provides assistance, and reduce the effort in braking. And that's how an automotive braking system works. Okay, that's about the uh, disc brakes. These were the parts: caliper, piston, brake pad, rotor, etc.
so you have seen the uh, video now you can see the energy transfer how the energy is transferred from the brake pedal to the uh, wheel or the uh, rotor brake pad, brake disc this is the uh, transferring chart so you can see from the first one is push rod or brake pedal there the driver is applying the pressure or applying the force so first of all the force is given to the brake pedal from there the energy is given to master cylinder master cylinder what are things are happening we have already seen there the pedal force is converted to uh, converts the pedal force into hydraulic pressure so it is uh, by using the pascal's law uh, hydraulic pressure is developed and it is transferred by uh, or through the hydraulic lines or tubes etc to the brake caliper piston and from the that particular piston the pressure is transmitted to brake pads and using that uh, or by engaging that with the brake disc the controlling is done so this is the uh, basic energy transfer mechanism so first one push rod or brake pedal from there to uh, master cylinder then to hydraulic lines then uh, comes uh, brake caliper piston then brake pads and finally rotor or brake disc <coughs> now uh, the detailed operation but all things are coming under the operation of a disc brake you, as you have already seen this, uh, go through this that is when the brake pedal is pressed by the driver the piston which are actuated hydraulically move the brake pad into contact with the disc applying equal and opposite force on the disc when the brake pedal is released the rubber sealing rings act as the return spring and retract the piston and brake pads away from the disc so uh, while uh, we are applying a pressure to the brake pedal what happens is the pistons are actuated using the hydraulic power and which may move the pad or move the brake pad or it makes it engaged to the disc or rotor by applying the equal and opposite forces on the disc so on the both side of the disc it will be uh, uh, forcing or making engaged with the brake pad and when the pedal is released using the spring force or the rubber sealing rings uh, which acts as a return spring and uh, that may cause the disengagement or it will help to disengage the uh, brake uh, brake pads from the disc and then it will uh, starts moving or uh, it will start moving yes so this is the basic operation of a disc brake now what are the main parts this is the main figure here you can see the master cylinder assembly master cylinder assembly what are things comes under the master cylinder assembly this is the master cylinder and various ports available here uh, the compensating port uh, the springs return spring the reservoir where the uh, brake fluid is kept then these are the transmission lines this is the caliper assembly caliper as you have already seen and it is a uh, rotor brake caliper piston etc so now these are the main parts of a uh, disc brake first one caliper then piston discs and brake pads so caliper caliper what is a caliper it it is mainly used to cover the brake pad right cover the brake pad and the piston and mainly uh, there are of two types first is fixed caliper and then floating caliper fixed caliper and floating caliper in certain cases it is fixed this caliper is 
fixed and certain cases it can be floated so there are two types fixed caliper and floating caliper and it is used to cover the brake pad and the piston next one is piston piston you have already seen it is mainly made up of uh, uh, aluminium aluminium or stainless steel and uh, it is actually uh, hydraulically actuated with a cylinder in the caliper next is disc brake disc brake disc so brake discs are em uh, employed in the disc brake uh, <clears throat> and it mainly consists of two types as you have seen in the video there are two types that is uh, either it is a solid type or ventilated type the uh, in the previous video we have seen the ventilated type that is uh, you can see many holes in that to uh, what do you call it? conduct away the uh, heat produced so even there are solid type also so two types of discs are available solid type and ventilated type the ventilated disc provides better cooling as compared to the uh, solid disc so <clears throat> and it uh, that way it results in a longer brake pad life these are all about the discs and uh, the materials regarding the materials it may be uh, made up of cast iron cast steel etc uh, which is having good anti wear properties and uh, nowadays we can see the carbon fibers and ceramics are also used for this uh, discs next brake pad brake pads so <clears throat> Brake pads are the components where the uh, uh, or uh, which is undergoing high friction because uh, they are pushed by the piston towards the disc and all. So the materials should be in, a, in such a manner that it can be used where uh, high friction is to be developed and also high pressure is to be developed. And th this friction results in slowing or stopping of the vehicle. So it is made up of many materials such as asbestos, ceramics, metal, metallic or uh, semi-metallic materials, etc. So these are the main materials and these four are the main parts of a disc brake. So what are all there? First one, caliper. Then piston, the caliper. In the caliper itself, there are two types of calipers, fixed caliper and floating caliper. Next comes the piston. Then disc disc it is mainly uh, two types are there solid type and ventilated type and the main materials utilized for the discs are cast iron cast steel etc then comes the brake pads brake pads where uh, we are using asbestos metallic parts ceramics semi metallic etc etc <coughs> Now, types of disc brakes, mainly two types of disc brakes are there, sport type disc brake and clutch type disc brake. So from the name itself, from the name itself, you can see what is a sport type disc brake. Sport type disc brake means uh, the braking action, the braking action will be Braking action will be given to certain sports or certain areas the braking will be done and the clutch type disc brake means there will be a clutch mechanism and uh, there will be a pressure plates using certain pressure plates the entire area of the disc will be engaged so you can see one by one First one, sport type disc brake. So in sport type disc braking system, the friction pads or brake pads concentrate only for a particular portion of the entire disc. 
okay particular portion of the entire disk it is the most commonly used type because of having advantage over the drum brake so this is the uh, sport type disc brake is the most commonly used type disc brake because it uh, it is having the advantage over the drum brakes there what happens uh, the friction pads or brake pads concentrate only for a particular portion of the entire disc it is not giving the friction to the whole or it is not engaging to the entire disc only certain portion of the disc is engaged that particular type of disc brake is termed as sport type disc brake then comes to clutch type disc brake clutch type disc brake consists of a pair of pressure pair of pressure plate having segments made of friction material provided over the entire circumference of the friction surface so here you can see a pressure plate a pair of pressure plate on the both sides of the uh, what do you call uh, disc and there it is made into uh, different segments which is made up of friction materials so these friction materials uh, containing pressure plates will be brought closer to the uh, pressure pad sorry uh, the disc and by engaging the same uh, the controlling is done or stopping whatever may be will be done and it moves axially outwards when the disc starts rotating that is while disengaging what happens or how it is disengaged so it is disengaged by moving axially outwards axially outwards means uh, the wheel or the axis of motion or axis of rotation in that direction it will move outwards and <clears throat> while moving outwards then the disc starts rotating this type of brake is fully enclosed inside a container called rib which may also act as a heat dissipator so in this case we are using a component called rib where this uh, type of braking or this setup braking setup system is fully enclosed and it acts as the heat dissipator also used for the uh, dissipating heat next we can uh, see the mechanical braking system so <clears throat> mechanical braking system so by the name itself you can see what is a mechanical braking mechanical braking means by using mechanical power or using certain mechanical linkage you can uh, apply the forces or the forces applied to the braking shoe or whatever may be will be given by mechanical means or utilizing the mechanical linkages so the other name is uh, manual stretch braking manual stretch braking so this is the figure and you can see the brake pedal where the driver applies the pressure or force is applied to this particular pedal and the pedal using this uh, certain kind of linkages you can see the fulcrum over here and different things will be there so this is actually a simple figure uh, maybe the links uh, in a links may be in a complex manner anyway this is a simple figure so <clears throat> just uh, just for the representation purpose you can see this is the link towards the right front brake to the left front brake then left rear brake and left uh, right rear brake so using the force uh, and the linkages different movements will be possible and using these movements uh, whether it is a drum or disc brake it will be actuated so basically it will be uh, the mechanical braking means they are using the mechanical uh, means uh, we are actuating so you can see here here the braking force is given by means of pedal which is transmitted 
by means of a wire and ropes or mechanical linkages so uh, here instead of using the hydraulic power we are using uh, ropes wires and ropes or mechanical linkages for the transfer of the power the power is transmitted by the mechanical means a cam is attached along with the brake shoes so that it can be actuated by a mechanical linkage so there is a cam portion available in the uh, various uh, types of uh, what you call uh, braking system and while the cam is moved then the brake shoes are moved as you can see uh, in the uh, previous figure it was there that is one place i think here you can see a cam shaped thing suppose there is a cam like uh, material in this portion and if it is rotating then what happens is this will expand expand and touch the uh, drum so in case of drum uh, braking system it will be uh, engaging that's why uh, or, or that's how you can control the motion so a cam is attached along with the brake shoes so that it can be actuated by mechanical linkage by revolution <coughs> it brings in brings contact between the shoes and the drum thereby increasing the frictional force between the two bodies for reducing the speed or to bring the vehicle to rest so by revolution of the cam you can see uh, the shoes will be brake shoes will be expanding and thereby engaging the drum in case of the drum braking system thereby controlling or increasing or decreasing the speed or even stopping the vehicle this braking system is obsolete now as the service brakes but still used in some vehicles as secondary brakes so this mechanical braking system is now an obsolete type that is not used in uh, present scenario but in certain vehicles as a secondary brake it can be utilized so the main disadvantage of mechanical linkage is that braking effects on all wheels are not equal and which brings instability in moving vehicle so the main disadvantage is that the by using the mechanical linkage the braking effect braking effect of each wheels may differ so braking effect of uh, the right wheel may not be similar or same as that of the left wheel or uh, any of the wheels among the four so if there is a uh, uneven or uh, non uniform uh, braking effect what happens is it may affect the stability effect of the stability of the motion of the vehicle so it may uh, result in a discomfort or uh, instability in the vehicle so that is the main disadvantage of a mechanical linkage or mechanical braking system therefore a compensation is employed to reduce the uneven braking effect so there will be a compensation to be employed to reduce this type of uneven braking effect the force is transmitted from here the next is so uh, you can see first of all we have seen the automatic uh, sorry automatic uh, manual or uh, <coughs> mechanical braking system we have seen that next is the hydraulic braking system hydraulic braking system uh, in the figure or uh, in the previous videos or we have seen the hydraulic braking system hydraulic braking system where we are using hydraulic pressure or the fluid pressure to actuate the mechanism so here the force is transmitted from the brake pedal to the shoes by means of liquid under pressure by the liquid under pressure using the liquid under pressure we are uh, 
utilizing or uh, <coughs> breaking so it consists of mainly three parts first one master cylinder then wheel cylinder and brake fluid these three are the main components of a hydraulic braking system so, okay. the detailed explanation will be given in the next uh, lectures